Well, guys, congratulations on A Thousand Tomorrows. What an emotionally powerful show this is. I enjoyed it so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. We're, We're so happy to be here. So excited. Well, Karen, what does it mean to you to see your work on the big screen? You wrote this book in 2005. It, so many people love this book. I grew up reading it. What, is, what does this mean to you? Well, I always dreamed that it would be on, this, on the big screen. I think even seeing it on any screen was a dream, actually. And so, you know, God always waits till it's for such a time as this. And I think there really are the beginnings of like a revival happening in our nation and even around the world. So I think the timing is perfect. And, uh, you know, I, watching what, what they did with the, the actors did such a great job bringing to life Allie and Cody. And so I can be more thrilled. I love that this is a family affair. Tyler, you play <laughs> such a monumental part in bringing this to life. What mm. was it like taking your mom's words and adapting them for the big screen? Because you grew up with this story too. You know this wow. like the back of your hand. Totally. I mean, I remember when she was outlining the book and we'd you know, be having family dinner and she's like, I think I want to tell a story about a bull rider and a barrel racer. So, I mean, I've lived with the book for so long. I got to revisit it as an adult as we were talking about the TV series and, and you know, outlined where I thought it was going and she was on board with my outline. And um, I think it just brings the story to life in a new way. We get to cover their whole story in six episodes. So whereas if this was like an hour and a half, two hour movie, stuff would probably have to be cut. But here we got to sort of enhance different storylines, add some new characters, and spend a lot of time in the that rodeo world, which is really exciting. So it was such a dream, and getting to collaborate not only with an amazing mom, but a great writer and a great you know coworker. It's been great. And one thing I love is that it really is true to the heart of this book. You don't really change a whole lot. That heart is still there. Written in two thousand five, still so popular today. Karen, what? What accounts for, for the popularity of this character, this story today? Why do you think it emotionally resonates with so many people to this day? I mean, I think at the heart of it, honestly, there are just not enough good love stories. Um, I know for me, when I get to see a great love story, I mean, I want to see it again and again. And there are movies that I'll watch that are 20 years old, but they're still some of the best love stories that are out there. So I think people love the story of an angry bull rider and a sick barrel racer. I mean, they're the most unlikely couple. And then the fierce love that comes as a result of what God does in their relationship. And I just think, you know, that's a timeless message, one that says love is the most powerful force of all, especially when it is motivated by a love, you know, that's centered on Jesus. Well, this, this show not only entertains, but it also highlights biblical truths. You have sections at the end where you teach from the Bible. I, I heard they were written by a pastor. Why was it so important to include these biblical life lessons that we can really apply in our own lives while also being entertained? You know, it's it's something that, I mean, Tyler, we talked about this together, just how important it mm -hmm. is not just to consume content, mm -hmm. but to have it actually make an impact in your life. And yeah, tell about that and how groups mattered. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's the kind of show that, you know, we hope people enjoy, that they binge together and, right. and watch it and that they fall in love with the love story. But more importantly, we think it's a show that touches the heart and that um, begs to be discussed, you know, whether it's with family or small groups, neighbors, because it deals with things like unforgiveness. It deals with um, pain and, and illness and how do we walk forward in life um, given difficult circumstances. And so I think that that Bible study series, that study guide really supports what we tried to write. And I think that's why it's resonating with so many people um, because, yeah, they might not have cystic fibrosis like Allie does, but perhaps they have another burden to bear. And so how can they move forward in faith and in hope, trusting God with the days of their life. You, you really touch on the fact that the Christian life doesn't mean it's going to be an easy life, right? There is going to be pain. There's going to be disappointment. There's going to be regret. Why was it so important to highlight this? And also, and how did you find that balance of having an uplifting book show, but also talking about these real life issues? I want to hear from both of you on that one. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, um, Life is full of difficult moments, and just because you believe or have a faith does not mean you're going to be exempt from that. And it's important to show people that. Otherwise, if we show them an unrealistic picture, they won't relate to it at all. So uh, getting into some of the you know messier parts of life, where it's anger, unforgiveness, a father that walks away, sickness, loss, you know, death, um, it's important that we show that in light of eternity, that this is not all that there is. Like there's hope. And I think Carl Joseph, who is Cody's Down syndrome brother, has some beautiful moments on, on screen where he's talking about heaven. And almost like if I said to you, you know, are you going to Disney World? And you'd be excited and say, yeah, we're taking the kids next month, whatever. He has that attitude toward heaven. And so as believers, we can have that. Or if you're not a believer, you can say, well, I want, 
I want that attitude because it's a one out of one of us, you know. So it's important that we don't shy away from these things, but that we lean into them with the peace and the love and the mercy that we get from our faith. Yeah, I think just to piggyback on that, like only when we acknowledge our brokenness and our reality, you know, can we A, you know, be united with each other because everybody's broken in some way, but also we can accept the grace and the love of God, which is unconditional for everybody. And so I think people, when we're watching a show or reading a book, we want to see something that's real. You know, you don't want to see something that is a filtered version of drama, but you want to see something that you can resonate with. And I think people, whether you're someone who goes to church or, or not, you want to see a story that is real. And so I think we've been able to accomplish that with A Thousand Tomorrows, just creating a realistic picture that it doesn't always end pretty and perfect, but there can still be beauty um, in the brokenness.